Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to episode 17 of Opening Basics. In this video we're going to look at the uh, center game and the Danish gambit. So uh, this is a continuation of our look at the moves uh, e4, e5 and the positions that arise after e4, e5. Um, as I mentioned in the previous videos, there's uh, three different moves that white has to attack the pawn on e5, which is sitting there undefended. And those moves are uh, f4, knight f3, and d4. So d4, which we're going to look at in this video, is the center game. Um, I wanted to mention briefly that after knight uh, f3 attacking and knight c6 defending, uh, we have looked at, uh, previously in the chess basic series, I looked at the moves uh, bishop, bishop to uh, c4 or to uh, b5. Uh, that's the Italian game or the Spanish game, also called the Rui Lopez. Um, and um, there is another main move here, which is d4. I haven't looked at that yet. I will get to that uh, later on in this series. And this is called the Scotch game. And you can see um, that it's actually related to uh, the opening we're going to talk about here. It's just that uh, the knights have come out first and then d4 is played. And uh, the main move here is d takes. e takes d4 as in, uh, as in the center game. So let's, let's just uh, back up. I wanted to mention that. So the Scotch game and the center game... Yeah, the, the naming conventions are sometimes confusing, so I just wanted to make a point of that, that the center game is you put the d-pawn out there first right away, and whereas the scotch game is uh, when you develop the knights and then you play d4. So in the center game, like in the scotch game, the main move is taking. Let's briefly look at what happens if you don't take. You could defend with uh, d6, say, but then um, white gets a good game after takes, takes, queen takes, and... Uh, you might think this is kind of a dull way to play, but um, there's still a lot of force on the board. All the material is on, uh, except for the queens. And um, so it's not safe for the king to uh, wander around the board. It's not like an endgame where the king becomes an active piece. He's going to have to, uh, black will have to uh, waste some time getting the king to safety or setting up some kind of shelter for the king, whereas white can castle. So white has an edge here, and uh, black players typically don't go for this kind of position. Um, Another way to defend, which is a little bit trickier and, and maybe uh, somewhat interesting, is knight c6. And uh, so this is a possible way to play, but um, white has uh, two good choices here. He can just push on with d5 and gain space, or he can play in a somewhat uh, <laughs> more tricky fashion, taking the pawn and then uh, pushing forward with f4 to, uh, to, kick, to kick the knight away. Um, th there are some, some tricks and traps here, but uh, it is important to notice that the queen cannot come up to um, h4 right away and deliver this check because g3 will block the queen and then they'll have two pieces hanging, so um, so that doesn't work. There are some other, other tricks uh, that black can try in this position, but the best move is probably just to uh, drop the knight back to... Uh, c6, and white has gained a tempo and gained a little bit of space, and he's going to develop his knight here to uh, block the queen from coming out, have a good position. So uh, this, is, this is good for white, and um, also pushing is good for white. So what that means is that after the move uh, d4, the center game, uh, black almost always takes, and that's, that's the best move. So after taking, um, if... If white develops the knight, uh, trying to recapture with the knight, um, black brings out his knight. You'll see we just transposed into the scotch game, so I'm not going to talk about that. Um, he can also recapture with the queen. This is a way of uh, playing the center game, which is not a gambit, and um, it has been tried. Some masters every now and then try and figure out a way to get some kind of edge with white, but... Um, so far, it doesn't seem to lead to much. So the usual move is to just drop the queen back to e3. And with the idea of um, quick development of the queen side pieces, say the bishop comes out to pin the knight, you block here. And now you're set up so, um, you know, after, after black castles, white will castle. We'll have opposite, opposite sides castling, and, and white will try for pawn storm against the king. But he has uh, no particular edge in this position. So... Uh, so this hasn't been too popular recently, but it is a way you can try to play. But the main idea with the center game, when you see this, um, it's almost always because your opponent is interested in playing the Danish gambit. So that's the move c3 here. 
Um, so having uh, given up this pawn, not bothering to recapture, just uh, putting up another pawn. Now you can take that pawn. It's, it's probably uh, a gambit that uh, black uh, should accept if he's trying for uh, getting the most out of the position. But there's also um, safe ways to decline this gambit. And uh, if you don't want to bother learning the ins and outs of the Danish gambit, you can uh, just play the move d5 and uh, get a decent position this way as black. Um, most common move here is to take the pawn. And then the best for uh, black, I think, is to try and round up the pawn with the knight. Um, it's interesting to notice that, uh, it's important to notice, I should say, that if, um, if white goes for this kind of line, developing the uh, bishop and then the queen with some kind of attack on the knight, and an indirect attack on the uh, pawn that um, just knight back to f6 is defending. And um, if the queen comes out to h5, again with this double attack, with the, well, kind of an attack on uh, f7 and an attack on the knight, then, then black can defend with the bishop here. So um, it's it's okay for um, for black. He does have to be uh, a bit aware of some of these tactics, but um, he can round up that pawn and, and get a decent game. So that's one way to play as black. Um, but it's also um, safe to take the pawn, um, and maybe better. Um, you grab the pawn, and uh, now there's two ways that uh, white has to play it. He can take back with the knight or he can develop the bishop. So let's let's talk about the bishop move first. This is the most uh, exciting and, and the main line actually is uh, the intent is really for uh, <laughs> for white to give up uh, two, two pawns and just go all out for the attack. And after you grab on b2, which you probably should, um, bishop takes, um, white has given up two pawns but he's got both bishops in uh, excellent <laughs> excellent shape and uh, and black has uh, no pieces developed. So the funny thing is, um, this this position, if black is careful, is is still good for black. And I learned this uh, funny line as black, and it's actually gotten me quite a few points. So I'll go ahead and show it to you. It's you bring the knight up to attack the pawn, and the most common move here is to push, attacking the knight, and then you counterattack his bishop with the d-pawn. So this is one idea. You can, uh, you can play this d4 move to counterattack rather than responding to the threat on your knight. And it helps shut down the, the bishop on this diagonal, which is important. Now if, um, if, uh, if uh, white takes on passant like that, then you just get easy development for your pieces. So this is no problem. Um, usually what will happen is that white will grab the knight you have to take the bishop, and then um, he can uh, throw in this uh, queen trade and take the pawn here. And uh, this looks really good at first for white because this pawn is defended by the bishop over here on b2 that got developed early. And uh, it's forking two of your pieces, but uh, there is a key saving resource here, which is the move bishop to... Uh, B4 check. And uh, so this uh, makes this whole line playable. Um, knight comes here to block the check, and then you can play uh, rook g8 and try and round up this pawn. And so um, you've gotten a lot of uh, pieces off the board. You're still going to have to waste a few moves as black. You're a bit behind in development. Uh, but you're up a couple of pawns if we count four to. Uh, Four to one over here, so you got a plus three, and then four to two. Oh, you're just up one pawn, but you have uh, a good good prospects of rounding up this g-pawn, which you need to do. You need to make sure this pawn doesn't become too much of a hazard. Um, and anyway, you can uh, go on. They, they, the chess engine actually rates this position as uh, even. But uh, anyway, you can play this. And uh, like I said, I've scored quite a few points as black because it seems like uh, the players who are playing the Danish gambit, they're not really uh, expecting to go into this forcing line and end up in a, a situation where the queens have come off and... Uh, <laughs> they don't have a whole lot to play for. Um, as I was preparing this video, I noticed um, that Chess Engine has an interesting suggestion along the way. So let's go ahead and put this on. e5 and um, d5, counterattacking, taking the knight. And then now, instead of um, taking the bishop right away, the engine is saying, throw in this bishop b4 check right here, and it's actually stronger. 
So if I believe the chess engine, it looks like this is a, a good position for uh, for um, black. And it, it's uh, a bit strange. It looks like, well, there's a check, so you have to deal with that. So say you bring the knight here. And even here, you're not grabbing the bishop, but what you're doing is you're taking the pawn on f6. So this is the key idea. The bishop is hanging. You remember you're down a piece at this point, but also this knight is hanging, which is pinned. So uh, you're going to get your piece back and um, in a good position. The uh, line might continue. Bishop b5, you block it with the pawn, and then knight to e2, defending the knight, and then you can grab the bishop. And you're a pawn up, and um, you're going to be able to castle pretty soon, and uh, yeah, white's position is not looking so threatening all of a sudden. So pretty interesting uh, improvement. And that's a line I've played for a long time with good success, and uh, there's an even better way to play it. So um, anyway, that is just one tricky line I wanted to show you, and um, it illustrates a lot of the points, the, um, the a lot of ways, a lot of the resources that Black has to defend against these attacks. The chief resources to keep in mind are the the pawn push to uh, d5 to block the bishop, and then this bishop moving with check will save you in a number of cases. So so keep those resources in mind if you're black. Um, so going back to the uh, white perspective, let's see, after bishop c4, and takes and takes, um, and knight f6, you don't really have to continue with this tricky uh, e5 line and go into that. What you can do instead is uh, just keep developing your pieces. And this can get... Um, this can get very difficult for black to defend. I mean, technically, the engine thinks that black is better. You know, black is going to keep getting his pieces out. And so will white. And um, e5 can be played here with some advantage. <clears throat> oh, well, with, with about an even game. The interesting thing is that, yeah, if you're not careful and you just go about routine uh, development, you have to be very careful that, that white doesn't get an overwhelming attack here. So if we back up a little bit, I, I played that a little bit too quickly. So knight f3, uh, probably the best move here is d6, yeah. Try and slow down. I think um, if uh, if white is going for this uh, slower path where he's not pushing e5 immediately, you need to organize your forces, get the knight here, get the pawn here, and, and try and control the, uh, the e5 square. So um, anyway... That's that's how to play this. I can't say a whole lot more than that. There's there's lots of different lines and they're all pretty complicated, and uh, they're related to um, this other line. So let's um, talk about that now. At this point, well, let's go back to the beginning, just to give you an idea of where we are. So, e4, e5. That's the openings we're looking at. D4. That's the center game. Takes c3. That's the Danish gambit, and we're accepting the gambit, and now. There are two moves here, uh, and we were looking at the bishop c4 move, which is the most common move, but there's also just uh, knight takes pawn. So in this line, white has gambited a single pawn, so he's not, not risking so much, um, but he has a, a lot of compensation for the pawn, so this is a very interesting way to play, and it's similar to the last line we just looked at in that uh, white is just going a bit slower here, uh, but he has still in the long run... Uh, good squares for his pieces and a dangerous attack brewing. So bishop to c5, bishop to b4 is uh, the most common move here. And then knight to f3, knight to c6, getting the pieces out. And this is related to the Goering Gambit, um, which I will also talk about when I get to the Scotch game. The Scotch game, <laughs> once again, the Scotch game and the center game are closely related. If you can imagine, with the Scotch game, we developed these two knights here and here, and then we put the pawn on d4. So from that position, you can also play uh, a, a, uh, a gambit called the Gearing Gambit, where you put the pawn on c3, and it often ends up in a position like this. So um, this is... Um, okay for white. He's going for, he's, he's sacked a pawn, but he's going for uh, long-term pressure against uh, the black king. Um, let's see, it's uh, white's move here. He continues with bishop c4, and probably it's a good idea to get in uh, d6 somewhere along here. Perhaps knight g e7 is also an option there. But you, again, you want to slow down this e5 push and then make 
make some square safe for your knight to develop. If you're if you're playing with d6, then that prepares knight to f6. So castles, knight f6. This is a position you can play for both sides. Uh, uh, black is a pawn up, but white has a lot of compensation for the pawn. And uh, pretty interesting chances. So um, I think that's how I will leave it with this video. Uh, we'll uh, maybe touch on the subjects more when I get to the Scotch game and I talk about the, uh, the Gearing Gambit. But uh, really, there's, there's lots of different ways for both sides to play from this point. So uh, too, many, too many lines to go over in one video. So uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one. In the uh, next video, I'll be looking at other replies, other um, moves after e4, e5 for uh, white. See you then.